Lots to get to with our next guest, CBS News Science contributor, Dr. Michio Kaku, a physics professor at the City University of New York and really something of our earthquake expert. So obviously your expertise is uh, needed uh, today. Interestingly, the 110th anniversary of the 1906 earthquake that destroyed San Francisco. We're now seeing obviously uh, earthquakes dominating the news cycle in the last two or three days, Ecuador and Japan. Given that we're talking about tectonic plates, are they at all connected? The short answer is no. Uh, we're talking about the Pacific Ring of Fire, yeah. stretching from Latin America through California up to Alaska, Russia, Japan, and down to the Philippines. However, there are linkages between nearby faults, like, for example, the Cascadia Fault off the coast of Seattle. It's linked to the San Andreas Fault, which you mentioned devastated San Francisco. So nearby faults can, in fact, be linked. So it's sort of like a, a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. I, I was struck and was reading a great piece in The New Yorker about the Cascadia subduction zone. And essentially, they were saying that they're on the clock up there. If you look at the last time it happened, that they are now overdue in that area, in the Pacific Northwest, for an earthquake. But you think that, and really, I guess, any seismologist will agree, that it's in northern Los Angeles where they should really be worried. Yeah, earthquake prediction is like voodoo yeah. and magic. Yeah. However, when you see the images from Ecuador and Japan, think of it as a dress rehearsal. There is a time bomb, a time bomb called the Cascadia Fault and the San Andreas Fault. Now, the cycle time for the San Andreas Fault is roughly, plus or minus, 150 years. And the last big one to hit Southern California was 1857. Meaning that, in some sense, according to one clock, we are uh, overdue for a big one to hit the northern L.A. area. So most seismologists looking at the San Andreas Fault would say that the next place to have a break would be northern L.A. Because we're talking about the, the, the Earth's plate movements, why is it that earthquake prediction is still, in this day and age, with technology where it is, for so many other things, why is it still a sort of voodoo? Well, we know that these fault lines scrape and move against each other at the rate of the, at your, the rate at which your fingernails grow, mm. about an inch uh, every six months or so. And so they're very slow, but pressure is building up. And pressure is building up along the San Andreas. That's why people are very worried. We see pressure building up in Cascadia, pressure building up in the San Andreas Fault. And remember that property damage in case of a big earthquake could be on the level of $200 billion. Mm. Now, these are estimates done by the government itself. And again, no one knows when it's going to happen, but we know it's inevitable. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when, given the fact that these fault lines have been rubbing against each other for, for centuries. As an LA native, I can say I've, I've you know, been through a few of these, the Whittier quake. You've seen the, the, the streets turn into a, a sort of liquid as it rolled through, nothing too severe. Of course, we've also seen earthquake preparedness taken to new play, new levels in the Pacific Northwest in San Francisco, where a lot of the buildings are base isolated, essentially on ball bearings. But how earthquake proof is the northern Los Angeles area? Not very. Uh, you've seen all the movies like San Andreas. Yeah. They exaggerate. A tsunami is not going to hit San Francisco, for example, because it's a sliding fault, not a subduction fault. So um, Hollywood get, has exaggerated it. But you cannot exaggerate the enormous unpreparedness that uh, will hit us when the earthquake actually hits. For example, Japan is the most earthquake-conscious country on the planet Earth. Children are schooled into the culture of earthquake warnings and prevention ever since they were little. And my father, my father comes from southern Japan, not that far from the epicenter of that earthquake. And even then, we're talking about casualties. 10,000 troops have been mobilized, 20,000 troops have been mobilized in Japan, 10,000 troops have been mobilized in Ecuador. So even with all the plans we laid out, we're still seeing entire villages being flattened as a consequence. The best laid plans are left looking like that when the, uh, when the magnitude is as high as it was. Dr. Michio Kaku, fascinating stuff. We appreciate your time today. Thank you.